What do you get if you cross a mouse with a mango? Don't be ridiculous. You can't cross a mouse with a mango because they are reproductively isolated. The two species have completely separate gene pools that cannot be combined. In biology, a species is a group of individuals that can interbreed. A gene pool for a species is the set of genes in the population at any given time. Evolution is a change in the gene pool of a population over time. So when two groups are reproductively isolated, like the mouse and the mango, they have separate gene pools and are therefore considered two different species. Speciation is the process by which new species are created. There are several ways this can happen. Imagine, for example, a population of mice that can interbreed because they are all of the same species. A flood comes along, causing the landscape to change and isolates one group of mice from the other. The two groups can no longer breed due to physical separation. Now imagine a few thousand years pass and suddenly an earthquake occurs, reuniting the two populations. But now they can't interbreed anymore. What happened? Thanks to several millennia of separation, the mice may look different or behave differently or have other genetic changes that make interbreeding impossible. Even though they are no longer physically separated, something keeps them apart. Because the two groups are now reproductively isolated, they are considered different species. Speciation by geographic separation is called allopatric speciation, while speciation that occurs without physical barriers is called sympatric speciation. Different species can look quite similar. For example, South American jaguars and African leopards are both large spotted cats, but different species. Species that are physically separated for a very long time may undergo parallel evolution, which is they might evolve in very similar ways after splitting off from a common ancestor. In cases of convergent evolution, unrelated species evolve in similar ways. For example, birds, insects, and bats all fly and have wings, but they evolved from different ancestors. Divergent evolution is what happens when a population splits off and becomes a new species. The two species, though closely related, develop new traits to better help them fit into their environments. All of these examples are based on species that reproduce sexually. That is, two parents each contribute to the genetic makeup of the offspring. In species that reproduce asexually or without sex, including many one-celled organisms, insects, and plants, each offspring is genetically identical to its single parent. In other words, each offspring is a clone. Even so, occasional mutations can still occur when a DNA strand is damaged by a chemical reaction or even a cosmic ray. Every so often, a mutation will actually survive and the cell will reproduce, resulting in a new strain of bacteria, for example, or a new variety of tomato. The species is the most important way we have of grouping organisms. Below the species level are different varieties or subspecies. These different varieties all belong to the same species because they can interbreed, but have some distinguishing feature. Take poodles and German shepherds, for instance. You could breed them together, but would you really want to? The process of evolution can be summarized in seven words. Genes mutate. Individuals are selected. Populations evolve. And you'll probably never be able to cross a mouse with a mango.